good morning everyone hello everyone and welcome to our 36th webinar series today i would like to start by wishing you and your families my personal best for your health and safety in these difficult times i would also like to express my profound gratitude to all our core committee members who have been working so selflessly amidst this covid-19 crisis as we start this webinar i am reminded of ts eliot words april is the cruelest month indeed while spring is underway while nature is reawakening humanity is facing one of its darkest periods in li in living memory the current global health crisis is an unprecedented wake up call that is showing us how crucial it is for countries to have policy and legislation ensuring preparedness and prevention the socio economic consequences of the covid-19 pandemic are uncovering stark asymmetries and structural imbalances in our societies such as the prevalence of poverty unequal access to health services weak state and central cooperation and persistent inequalities of income as well as of access to public goods and fundamental human rights the latest data shows that the pandemic has been hampering the realization of the sustainable development goals pushing critical development targets beyond reach and hitting the most vulnerable and marginalized segments of the populations the hardest to contain the spread of the pandemic elevate its effect and ensure that no major crisis will follow at the economic social and, and environmental levels it is crucial it is it is crucial that we implement well directed and well resourced res responses that are inclusive forward looking and aligned with the sustainable development goals aab has such a lies in more than in more ways than one with over 70% of our alumni being entrepreneurs it was an organic decision to float aabn as a dynamic entrepreneurial ecosystem that caters for domestic and global markets it is not just a talent pool it's also a space for established entrepreneurs to network and for the aspiring ones to galvanize ideas and support though chennai continues to be the nerve center we have active and productive participation in chapters in coimbatore pondicherry madurai and bangalore some of the key areas addressed by aab in chapters include cutting edge technology in it automobile manufacturing power petroleum products heavy fabrication healthcare infrastructure agriculture management core engineering product developers and, and innovators thanks to our entrepreneurs and their expertise we have helped many members with business proposals make informed and viable choices driven by market needs aab has not just realized the need of the changing scenario but has been quick to act as a sounding board for members seeking advice and it has been encouraging successful entrepreneurs to create a platform where technical skill and business know how meet over the past several months we have been able to put together online programs to keep our aabn community not just engaged but also meet a range of inspiring people who can help shape your ideas and thoughts today we have one such personality mr n ramnathan a respected businessman technocrat and a visionary to share his thoughts on unmanned aerial vehicle a uav a perspective and recent developments improvements in technology and regulatory environment are stimulating the expanded use of unmanned aerial services Uh, unmanned aerial vehicles in a widening range of application now the capability of airborne platforms to deliver higher accuracy performance can meet even more demanding requirements of users unmanned aerial vehicle popularly known as drone have been identified as a viable substitute and or <clears throat> and complement remote sensing platforms for agricultural monitoring some of the major applications have plant health monitoring precision agriculture cross uh, crop loss assessment etc Mr Ramnathan will review the latest innovative inspection applications from urban roof inspection work, uh, workflows to beyond visual line of sight critical operations he will discuss the different requirements and challenges for posi for positioning technology in critical and commercial applications in urban and remote areas a very warm welcome to you Mr Ramnathan and we feel profoundly honored that you have taken time off on a sunday morning to address us now if I, if i were to re, if i were to provide you with a comprehensive profile of mr n ramnathan i mean i might require more than the time we have fixed for this whole program so i will limit myself to a few that will capture the essence of his achievements and activities mr n ramnathan mechanical engineer from cit coimbatore started as a professional career with corporates such as tvs toyota taco etc he turned his focus on becoming an entrepreneur in the year 2011 by supplying and manufacturing seat parts for us truck market and he expanded his business in 2017 by giving out complete seats for a railway application his area of expertise includes operations 
marketing, new product development, and cost control. He has handled both domestic and international OEM segments. Mr. Ramnathan is trained in AOTS Japan and in Toyota production system. He set his milestone in 2019 by becoming director and CEO of Daksha Unmanned System Private Limited, and he also is an investor. DUAMS provides a complete range of end-to-end -end US, US technology solution. The company provides a world-class technology on the main opportunities of UAS, UAV technology, smart drones. Before I wind up, let me once again extend a very warm welcome to all and reiterate that our AAB and those are always open to those who might want to strengthen our work with the suggestions. I also wish to place on record our deep commitment, a commitment to work tirelessly as a team to carry forward our goals in a constructive, gratifying way. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Ramnathan. Uh uh, good morning to all. Uh, thanks, uh, Gopi, for that uh, introduction. Uh, as as uh, we always uh, know that uh, knowledge is uh, one thing which always keeps growing and uh, you have to learn for that. And I keep learning from all the uh, brilliant brains uh, in this uh, forum. And I hope it'll continue. I'll continue to learn many things. Uh, not sure whether I'm... Uh, to that level of what Gopi explained, definitely uh, with little experience what I've come across through in my life. Uh, I would like to just uh, thank uh, my friend Jenny personally, whom I know for the last 30 years, for giving me this opportunity to uh, present uh, what little I've learned in the ABN uh, forum. With that, I will uh, just uh, go through to the presentation on the uh, Unmanned Aerial Vehicle. I'll just uh, start uh, sharing my uh, screen now. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Okay. You can make it full screen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good morning and welcome once again to the world of drones. Many of you would have uh, known and seen these drones. And uh, it doesn't limit to any one application. It has a wide range of application. And I'll just uh, go through how it, it all uh, gets into the uh, commercial as well as the other special applications. So basically, I would like to give you, uh, many of you would have uh, known about this. I would like to give you a, uh, the classification and key abbreviations which are used in the industry and a quick glimpse about Daksha, uh, UAV product and application, uh, example of payloads and parts which are used in drone, uh, case study on agricultural application. I thought uh, uh, we have uh, many case studies, but I thought agriculture being a very commercial application and uh, most uh, required one for the country and the world, I thought that would be a suitable thing to present. And then a conclusion on the agriculture, what we can conclude. And just one uh, page synopsis on a construction application advantage uh, with drones, uh, challenges, and then we can have the question and answer session. So basically, UAVs uh, is classified uh, based on their uh, MTGW, we call its maximum take of gross weight. So we have five grades today, which is uh, termed as nano, which is less than 250 grams, uh, micro, which is from 250 to 2 kgs, small type of drones, which is 2 kgs to 25, medium drones, which are 25 to 150, and large drones, which are greater than 150 kgs. So the key abbreviations, many, many of you would have gone through RPAs, Remotely Piloted Aircraft System, UAS, uh, Unmanned Aircraft System. Unmanned Aerial Vehicle is a part of an unmanned aerial aircraft system. So GCS, which is a ground control station. VLOS is the common word, which is visual line of sight and beyond visual line of sight. Then UAOP is there, Unmanned Aircraft Operator Permit. Then there is an NPNT from DGCA, which is no permission, no takeoff. And we have a UAN, which is unique identification number. So these are some of the key abbreviations which are used in the industry. Now, uh, 
any questions uh, you can just note down from the slides i can uh, cover those things and whatever i i can uh, reply to you i will reply and what i cannot i will just get the answers to you by mail uh, if you can share your email ids so about daksha uh, daksha was started in 2002 and the name is given by none other than the greatest scientist of the century uh, late dr abdul kalam uh, he was an mitian uh, himself so he when he visited in 2002 he gave a, a instruction to his team to focus on drones he said drone will be the future so please focus on that and csr the center for aerospace research and the mit campus uh, i started working from then so 2012 was the first milestone achievement they were uh, daksha was a front runner in uh, the ua us darpa where they had a mission to be achieved among 153 companies daksha was uh, was the first to carry out the activity successfully so that is the time uh, dr kalam said uh, the us government offered about 1 million dollars for technology and when uh, dr sentil kumar was the current director of csr today he is uh, when he came back and spoke to dr kalam he said are you interested in selling your country to someone else so don't do that what is it you need for development then uh, at that time uh, the late uh, cm uh, dr jayalalitha she gave a support of about 25 crores funding for csr to promote and develop drone activities in the in the state so with that note based work we started working on various things in 2018 a lot of uh, service projects were done for defense including the one in the uh, uttarakhand uh, disaster then we have the maulivakam disaster we have the uh, the during the cyclone a lot of activities were carried out by the team as a social support and uh, in australia we had a longest endurance challenge and we won the second place and we have today the longest endurance certificate which is 6 hours and 15 minutes uh, the continuous uh, flying of drone which is the uh, first of its kind in the world the challenge in australia was slightly different we had a point uh, two five points uh, difference between uh, us and the australian company so they came first and we came second so continuing the efforts in 2019 daksha turned into a private limited company which was due to a competition which came in uh, indian air force which was called as meher baba in the name of one of the great uh, aircraft air force uh, personnel and they wanted to make a competition in swam drones so this started in 2019 and about 700 companies came for the first round of participation and which got uh, boiled down to 120 companies in the second round and uh, we had the finals in last february in 2021 where only four companies were there and i am uh, proud and happy to say that daksha was the smallest startup in that forum and it was the only smallest startup all others were all the other three companies one was uh, with uh, um, uh, adani group and the other one was with uh, rafal uh, group which is uh, not the uh, french one it was with uh, rafael technologies which is with an israelian support and there was one more company from uh, bangalore new space they also of course they have a certain other supports we were the only indian uh, origin company with with no other foreign investors it's all uh, small it is small startup in general so we have successfully completed the trials we are waiting for the results and uh, we are sure to we have completed the mission successfully so we are i hope we get the results by this month and or early uh, next month uh, that's that's about uh, the uh, daksha starting uh, requirement and currently we hold uh, two key licenses from dgca under a 6 kg category we have a dhq4 which is can be we have a manufacturing license for 1000 units which can be used for surveillance primarily and we are the first one to get a hybrid drone ice engine based for agriculture and we have got a dgc approval for that as well in last uh, march so we are trying to get into commercial production fully this year on agriculture and uh, that's where we stand and about 65% we have localized the parts of course we have certain import parts like certain batteries and things like that which we are working on developing here 
So about our partnership and recognitions, uh, we have Anna University as our exclusive partner on technology front, which is a 10 years exclusive arrangement, which is syndicate approved. And uh, we, we go ahead with that arrangement as technology is the uh, prime thing for this uh, particular application. Anna University does all the technology and we do the manufacturing and marketing and all the uh, front end promotion. We have an arrangement with them on an exclusive basis. We have Anivel as a partner in uh, for the BB Loss Consortium. All of you would have uh, uh, read in newspaper that about 20 companies in India have been approved for BB Loss Consortium. We are one among, the, uh, one among them. And uh, soon, maybe in a couple of months time, the BB Loss trials will start. BB Loss will be, it's, it's a long way to go in the country because of the infrastructure the country has got. You know, all the cable, uh, everything, crisscross methods, a lot of uh, interferences, a lot of obstacles. So the uh, DGCA is working on, and the MOCA, Ministry of Civil Aviation, they're working on various uh, methodologies to get into a, a thing uh, for traffic management, unmanned traffic management, so that they, you know, you have to say, ensure that it doesn't fly in the restricted areas, all that, a lot of, lot of things have to be linked. So this, this will go for uh, some time, maybe a year or so. But once it is completed, it will be a game changer because you all your medical requirements or uh, any other emergencies, you can definitely use the drone, which doesn't need, you don't need to worry about the traffic conditions and you can uh, get the service support as and when required at the fastest time. So then we have the first petrol engine, as I explained to you. We are a Make in India registered company, startup uh, registered and MSME. And also we have uh, DGCA registered uh, drones as I explained to you. We do uh, value added services as drone accessory sales and service, drone software, drone pilot training and inspections. So getting into a slide about technology, where we are, uh, there are five different levels of autonomy in drone industry. And we are level five, which is fully automized. We can, from a touch, touch of a button from the ground control station, the mission can be completed and the drone will come back. The UAV will come back to the, again, the start destination without any human reference. That's, that's the level of automation, which is level five. And uh, I am proud to say that using uh, artificial intelligence and deep learning, Raksha is one of the few companies in the world with a wide range of level five autonomy drones. So now, uh, getting into the uh, product and application brief, though there are uh, many, I've just categorized. Uh, first is agriculture, where we can do crop health monitoring. What we mean here is uh, we, the drone industry will definitely make agriculture from the current conventional agriculture to precision agriculture. Uh, today, we spray uh, the pesticide across the field whether it is required or not, because that is how the methodology is today. With, with the help of uh, drones, we can go and do a crop health monitoring and whichever crop is infected, only there you can spray to that level of accuracy, you can get in drones, which in turn will give you a good healthy crop because the other good crops don't get any pesticides on them. And these type of advantages is there with the usage of drones. You can do a soil health assessment. You have an improved resource utilization. Then we have forest and wildlife. You know, the forest uh, fire. We have the uh, uh, wildlife conservation. Uh, elephants crossing the tracks. You know, you can monitor. You can send signals so that the uh, uh, animal uh, life is protected. Human uh, wildlife conflict, intrusions, people trying to go and, uh, you know, take the value valuable things from uh, animals like the tusk of the elephant, all this you can monitor with drones. So that, that uh, thereby it can give a protection in the forest. And we can also monitor the forest when with the start of fire, you would have seen forest fires, it spread very rapidly. So you, if you have a drone monitoring system, you can just try when the fire starts immediately, you can act upon before it catches and multiplies. Then we have a healthcare, which is primarily a BB loss operation, which is, which will be a big uh, game changer. Uh, both for health, uh, BB loss will be healthcare as well as for the food supplies. Then we have uh, mining, which we have we have done uh, for CMPDA, which is a Coal India subsidiary in Ranchi. We have given a LiDAR-based uh, drone, 
which is you know which is very expensive drone one drone cost close to about 1.7 crores so this lidar you can survey hectares of land and the data processing with lidar will be like you know it is uh, 20 times faster than the conventional data processing method captured through an optic camera so lidar is a big game changer in uh, coal mining industry and the coal official people are very happy and the government has now given permission for doing uh, the uh, survey there and you can with the drone you can easily monitor what type of uh, encroachment people have done you know suppose the government has given a permission to dig up to 3 feet we have proved there are cases where people have gone up to 3 meters so this is a big resource so government is now putting a mandatory rule that everywhere any allocation of mining it has to be the drone survey has to be done and if we all know that in coal fields or in any mining area if somebody human guy goes for a survey or something you know you don't know whether he'll return to the base alive because you know a lot of things have happened so drone you can sit in a place and fly so there is nobody can do anything because it flies at a particular height even people may not know it's a, we can use such small drones also we can survey in multiple uh, locations easily so government is pushing all that today then uh, the next one is homeland security which is real time surveillance security planning drugs narcotics uh, detection and then uh, the next one is urban development city survey we are given to tamil nadu police almost close to about 30 drones uh, any vip visit like last time the chinese premier came so the, those times we did a survey from here to mahabalipuram and identified gave them the hot spots where they improved the security so today they have about 30 drones with them we give them the training after giving the units they are quite happy in controlling the crowd and uh, traffic management of course which is again uh, related to the police activity then we have disaster management like as i told you mauliwakam we could save about 5 to 6 lives of people who were under the debris using a drone with a thermal camera you know we found people alive under the debris we help we inf- given uh, the information location to the uh, fire personnel and authorities they immediately went and they could save about 5 uh, to 6 people uh, life using this and during floods lot of support were done you know delivering food packets and you know identifying dropping the uh, the uh, water uh, jackets all of those those type of uh, uh, supports so getting into a bit of daksha we have uh, the aggregator which is uh, powered by a uh, gasoline and battery is basically for uh, redundancy which is in case of any failure on engine the battery will bring the drone down to the land you know that's that's a safety mode and this uh, can with a 3 and 1/2 liters uh, fuel tank it can fly about 40 minutes endurance and payload is about 10 liters of uh, spray material and uh, we can go for a range of 500 meters because we have to currently operate in visual line of sight operating altitude we can go up to 20 30 meters it is programmable like what we have done is for paddy we can program it not to fly beyond say 8 feet or 10 feet it depends on the crop you can plan so that you know the even if somebody wants to fly again above that it will not fly we can restrict uh, the flight uh, height then the maximum launch altitude we call is 1000 meters above mid sea level we can use these type of drones so then we have the navigator which is for defense mining and various other applications this is basically these type of drones get into the swam mode which i told you which we did uh, trials with uh, indian air force we have done a competition with indian air force the right side one investigator is the smallest drone which is about uh, close to about 1.2 kilograms and this can do a 30 to 40 minutes endurance with a surveillance of 40x zoom and you can get a live hdmi out so that's the speciality we are given the biggest advantage daksha provides to the country is that all the data which is very very important all the data will be stored in the indian server that is the biggest advantage daksha provides today if you see any drone which is flying outside it's all from china whether you like or not the, the data will go to the chinese side so first and then it will get transmitted so you can imagine how much information china is getting whether they use it or not but they can get all the complete data of the country using the, their drones that is the reason now government has banned dji lot of drones they have banned today you cannot buy a dji drone now 
So a lot of people are coming to us asking for various drones. So this is the communicator. As uh, Ms. Sarathi was telling, this is a, this is a VTOL uh, based uh, uh, support, which can use for gas and oil pipeline inspection uh, and uh, railways uh, line inspection, forest, various applications. Then we have another product called Tethered Drone, which is for a boundary. So, you know, uh, if you have a warehouse or if you have a big area campus, these drones will be operated through Tether. This will be powered from a Tether station on the ground. They will go up to 100 to 150 meters. They can fly 24 hours nonstop. And they will do a surveillance of five kilometers radius. So that's what the Tether Drone does. You can, uh, endurance, I put eight hours, you can have 24 hours also. It depends on the type of uh, power support you're giving. So it can go up to a 200 meters uh, altitude and you can launch it on 4,000 meters also. Like if you see for defense, you can fix this in a vehicle. You can uh, lift it and it can uh, be flying and you can uh, program the other drones to fly and it can come back to the vehicle where it, when you move the vehicle, it can ask the other drones to communicate and come back to the location. So the DHQ4 is again a mapping and surveillance and also for solar inspection. Uh, that's a DGC approved drone. And Daksha Mapper is for big time mapping surveys of the river belt. We have done in Pudukotai, we have done in various other locations in Andhra. Uh, we have given a clear layout of what type of encroachments people have done on the river belt. Government is now pushing, you would have seen a lot of uh, inquiry from Survey of India. A lot of drone survey, a lot of uh, RF, RFPs are coming. This will be a big game changer in survey. As all, all of us know, uh, surveying by a surveyor is the biggest task one should, if you in acres of uh, area, if you have to survey, it becomes a problem. And today, whatever map, whether we like or not, the blueprints, what we have is all done through in, uh, doing uh, British days. We don't, we have not updated our land map. So government wants to update the land map. And also this will help in a big way because drones can give you accuracy of five centimeters even some, some cases we have gone up to one centimeter accuracy in the boundaries, which means you don't need to worry about, you know, your land being encroached. You don't need a patta. If you have a drone survey, you know exactly what is your land uh, level. You know, today the GPS positioning, what the satellite data can give you an accuracy of five to 10 meters range. That's what they normally do. So which creates a time problem because uh, nobody wants to give even one feet of land other person occupying, you know, it becomes a big uh, tussle and you know how many civil cases are there on the land issues. So drone will be, make a big change in that front as well. And a lot of survey tenders are coming up now in the country. Various states have started doing that. So these are some of the payloads and parts, just to give you an example. Uh, the last, uh, the first six items are some payloads, uh, like a thermal camera, LIDAR, and, uh, you know, uh, the other touch other things. And then uh, we have in the bottom, I have three, which is uh, the battery lithium ion packs, propeller sets, and then the uh, petrol engines, ice engines. So with that, uh, I just uh, want to give you, get into the case study on agriculture. So Dr. Kalam was instrumental in developing this drone because he said, don't think only about defense, Think of drones used by common man, which is primarily agriculture. He says that is the area you should focus. So the IC engine, we did about four years of R&D on this to get into this level. Four to five years we have done. So now this, this drone is an all-up weight of 45 kgs. It's a maximum take of gross weight, So, which is used in agriculture. If you all of us remember... Uh, the uh, 12 coast train, ca cancer train uh, patients from, uh, from Batinda in uh, Punjab to be counter that uh, went. We have which cancer from pesticides primarily because 25% of uh, as per FICI uh, source, 25% of the value of the ag agrochemical industry is unregistered pesticides. They are already, already pesticides are harmful. These unregistered are more harmful and can create a lot of issues. So they cause cancer and uh, drones reduce 30% usage due to high pressure and uh, minimize uh, human intervention. So which, which can uh, definitely reduce the chance of people getting cancer. So what we did is uh, the next one is the labor uh, uh, availability on the agricultural industry today. 
so drones become very very important because the labor to do a, a one to two acres a day is what he can cover whereas drones can cover completely about 20 to 30 acres depending on the field range so we did a, basically we uh, what we did an uh, agricultural uh, thing our uh, drones are basically to fill 10 liters spray parts you can configure for higher uh, land areas like say 10 acres 20 acres you can do a mapping of the area and you can do an autom automatic uh, geo with geofencing so it can take off fly one acre it can cover come back to the uh, base you can fill the uh, pesticide again it will go and start from the area where, where it left so that it can automatically the the farmer has to only just control the pesticide and has to monitor the fuel tank to ensure he fills the fuel so no battery charging stations are required generators required because there is no charging of batteries you know the battery operated drones as all of you know would have been aware a lot of people fly battery operated drones the biggest challenge in that is the batteries within one acre one 1.2 acres the battery is fully discharged so you need to have spare batteries and these are lithium polymer batteries which are not made in the country you had to import so these batteries cost something like 25 to 30k each battery and the cycle is 150 uh, cycles is what you can use so it makes it very very difficult for a normal guy to maintain the battery and charging you have to have a generator in the field because many fields as you know power is a big scarcity so these drones doesn't need anything. Petrol is available everywhere and you can just use petrol to fly these drones. Batteries are for safety redundancy. So if you need a charging also, you can do in the night, you can charge the batteries and put them back in the system. So we have done various trials for palm trees in Andhra Pradesh, paddy fields in Tanjore and Kadalore, turmeric fields in Perambalore, cashew orchards. We have given our drone uh, to Tamil Nadu Agricultural University through an university. Uh, they have done uh, more than 500 to 1,000 acres of various studies and they were quite happy about the results. So I'll just quickly go through what, what all the areas we have done, what type of benefits we have got. Cotton field, you can see the consumption of uh, pesticide, one liter on manual per acre against that, it's a 700 ml. You have a direct 30% reduction in cost of weedy sites in cotton. Then you can see the uh, vegetable field same size field using uh, manual and uh, drone it gives a more a close to about 20 percent higher yield that's what it gives a paddy field you can see water usage reduced by 80 percent of uh, while using drones you know manually if you have to sp spray along with the pesticides you have to do about 150 liters while that became 20 liters with the drone and process time reduced by 90%. As I mentioned, manual takes about one day for spraying two acres, and whereas drone can cover minimum 20 acres. So that is the type of advantage we are getting. Similarly, we did in sugarcane fields, about five to six. The response is very good because sugarcane, as you know, manually you cannot get in and spray. It is a, it is a very difficult area to, for a human to move in and spray. And uh, sugarcane is a very high potential area of... Uh, snakes uh, shelter so you have a lot of issues of snake bites and things like that so people uh, are very happy when we demonstrated with the drone to use the drone for sugarcane spray and the yield also was very good with the drone so primarily with cashew i have not put a slide but cashew we did uh, about two weeks back i was there when we did in kadalur uh, the with the tractor mounted uh, spray they use about 120 liters of uh, spray chemical for spray material for one acre whereas with drones we use only 50 liters for 1.2 acres with the same yield result so they were extremely happy and uh, next uh, year i think cashew between uh, december to feb only they do normally so three times spray is being done so they have asked us to come this year uh, end for uh, supporting their requirements as you all know, Kadalur is the biggest cashew belt. 40,000 hectares is what Kadalur has got in cashew. So what UAV does as a conclusion, I would like to present is that conventional agriculture to precision agriculture, reduction in usage of harmful pesticides, which saves human as well as a huge cost in saving for the farmers because pesticides are very expensive. 
life saving as there is no human intervention of pesticide spray there is no which uh, drone does it only you have to fill the uh, uh, chemical tank with the uh, material boon to farmers as labor source becoming very scarce in the remote areas you don't get people today higher yield gives better profitability and creates rural employment what i mean by creates rural employment is that today we have people who are 10th standard 12th standard uh, we are getting a drone uh, uh, pilot training school government has uh, the central government has opened up lot of avenues the moca ministry of civil aviation dg sorry dgc has given permission for uh, pilot training this will be a very good uh, thing for rural employment because agriculture you can you can stay in your town and you can fly the drones almost 9 to 10 months in a year you will have and the revenue you generate will be very good because it is not like some you know 6 7000 8000 rupees revenue drone as you know it's it's cost between 500 to 600 rupees an acre for drone spray which is similar to the manual what we have studied so people will generate more revenue for themselves and each drone needs two people one one pilot and one co-pilot so that that's how it creates a good amount of rural employment and we all know what is the type of we just had a quick study on tamil nadu alone you you have so many lack of hectares and it can create so much of rural employment over 1500 2000 people government is also seriously the last government and this government also has shown a keen interest for doing this we are doing a trial in uh, tirunelveli for uh, covid now last uh, two days i will show you just a video and uh, last year we did lot of spray during covid now you all know that everybody is saying it is uh, airborne you know the uh, uh, virus is airborne which we we studied last year itself we gave a paper also and it gave a good reduction on areas like i was personally involved we did uh, spray in areas like uh, Tirvika Nagar, Perambur, all that uh, congested areas. It gave a good result, and unfortunately, there were some articles about drone spray. So the government said put it on hold. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't continue it, but it gave a good result. Now the government, since the approval has come from DGCA to go ahead, they are now trying again in Tirunel Valley today. So this is a synopsis of a construction application advantage. you can get 5 to 20% saving in material consumption as all of us know big civil projects the material storage material consumption it is very difficult to monitor so this drones give you a very good uh, data insight on volumetric analysis how much material can be used need to be used you can do everything you can give a big analysis in no time so that you can monitor from your place what is happening in your site If you fly a drone for 30 minutes, it will say what is the type of construction it has happened around, whether it is what we have planned to actual is okay. All these type of things. These are various activities. 61 percent more accurate measurements it can give you in the in the building. Safety, you can predict where you need to be more safer. Communication, collaboration, you can do 65 percent improved. It has given. These are data is given by Drone Deploy 2018 Commercial Drone Industry Trends in which is published in May 2018. so this is basically on various things uh, we are uh, i have not presented anything in the oil and gas but we are working with the company we had a discussion uh, with the company to do a pipeline inspection because india typically we have a lot of encroachments you know theft issues so they they want to do a 1250 km range of pipeline inspection uh, where we have to where there is a beyond visual line of sight as well as visual line of sight so we are working on the, with them on the modus of operation how to go about it which type of drones because up to 3 kilometers you can have visual line of sight in air and we have to also see the restricted area of flying you know some pipelines may cross in airport area so how to what type of drones you can fly in those areas to monitor the situation so we are working on a project with them maybe in a month's time we will have a proposal done for them so coming to the challenges as i mentioned before delivery usage in high obstacle conditions is a big challenge avoiding non fly zone during flight and unmanned air traffic management which the government is working on rules on the other friend pilot availability the government has now opened up lot of training schools even anna university has got approval for a training school now they will be soon announcing and this is not going to be very expensive i think they this will be a 3 months course or 2 months course 
which may be costing about uh, 20 25k to an individual i i guess so i'm not accurate on the data and uh, that will give them a very good uh, opening for their employment so this is going to be a big game changer again on the pilot training the government is very collaborative the central government i should say on this the minister of civil aviation lot of new people from lateral entry they are giving lot of support driving these things to get into the uh, area so we hope a good uh, results uh, this year and next year to come in this industry uh, lithium polymer as all of us know the lithium polymer currently china is the biggest uh, manufacturer and uh, us there is but us also the information is that the companies operate from china uh, lithium ion csr uh, people are uh, the indian electric uh, side they are uh, the government side they are working lot of lithium ion cells they have done uh, some development is what i understand uh, about say 1200 1300 cells type of level they have come because it's a scarce uh, resource i think lithium uh, is currently available in one belt of karnataka they have identified they are working the uh, the uh, minerals corporation is working on uh, finding out the availability of lithium because this is going to be a future for the batteries all the lead cells batteries will go on because uh, of their maintenance and their uh, pollution uh, issues lithium will be a big game changer there so i am working on couple of lithium ion cells project but uh, lithium polymer as of now to the best of my knowledge there is nothing in india so we need to depend on primarily on china so that's one constraint uh, which government is also trying to promote through the various industrial forum to get somebody to get into this they are talking to various uh, departments on this so these are all basically a basic challenge in uh, drone industry today out of which i think over the next year most of them will be converted as opportunities rather than the challenges and once bv loss is completed and something is done you will see definitely for sure everywhere drone flying and uh, i am sure from daksha drone you will see definitely in agriculture you say jakras tamil nadu and other areas we will be seeing it soon in the country maybe next uh, Three to four months time, you will have a lot of uh, Daksha drone flying for agricultural application. So this is what I thought. I'll just uh, uh, before taking the question and answer, I'll just show you a couple of video just to understand what the aggregator is, and a uh, couple of a uh, couple of videos I'll just show you. This is you can see a farmer. Uh, you can see the video now. Yes, yes, sir. We can. Yeah, this is a farmer operating. You can see that is how we have designed it. It's a very user friendly. We can educate the farmer to do. That's the whole idea. And uh, you can see the spray. It is a ultra low volume spray. It's a technology. The spray technology is from Germany. The the spray nozzles are from Germany. And uh, these drones can cover 25 to 30 acres a day without any problem in five hours time. So during that trials, we have not restricted the height. So now we have restricted the height. We have made the program to do at a particular height. the drone which is flying in the back is the uh, smaller drone to capture the video
So this is another one which we just did uh, yesterday in uh, Tamil Valley. So this is our vehicle uh, which we have branded for both uh, agriculture as well as any demonstration we we take in this vehicle. You can see almost four or five drones. And the gentleman who now waves of the hand now here, both the hands to lift the drones is uh, Professor Sendil Kumar, who is the director of CISR. The gentleman now waves the hand on the left. So just to demo on the road how to how the spray will be, then the demonstration went on to the uh, particular areas they have specified. You can see on the road how it is spraying. So that, that's the way it is. We have done a lot of things uh, last year in uh, Coimbatore Market and then Perambur, Trivika Nagar areas. Big challenge because, uh, you know, all of us know Perambur, Trivika Nagar, very congested, a lot of cables. We took it to the house buildings, top of the roof. We just lifted from there because from the road, a lot of entrance was there. 